We started our combined clinic for bleeding and clotting disorders with a hematologist and gynecologist at the Hemophilia Center and the Center for Women's Health at Oregon Health and Science University because we were seeing patients in our other clinics that really needed the combined attention of a hematologist and gynecologist and we wanted to bring them into one space so we could address their concerns together right away. We work here at the OHSU Center for Women's Health and in partnership with the OHSU Department of hematology, specifically the Hemophilia Center. And um, in our project, um, we have set up a collaboration where um, we see um, women and girls with heavy menstrual bleeding and manage them collaboratively between a hematologist and a gynecologist. And I um, am part of the leadership team for the adolescent portion of that clinic. We um, call our clinic the Spots, Dots, and Clots Clinic and we see um, girls both pre-menarche and, um, and adolescents for um, anticipation and management of their heavy menstrual bleeding. A lot of women don't even know that they have a bleeding disorder until they somehow make it to a hematologist because their periods are so heavy that they're having to miss school, that they're, they're bleeding through, they're not able to kind of live their lives like they'd like to. Um, so I, this clinic has been great because it allows people to get not only the, the gynecologic point of view, but, but the hematologic side as well, because sometimes there's a bleeding disorder involved and sometimes there's not. But there are things that can be done and um, to improve quality of life and people don't usually realize that. They know that like, oh, my mom bleeds like this, my aunt, my sister do, so this is just normal. This is what we've always dealt with. Um, I think it's really kind of empowering when they finally <laughs> make it to us and realize like, oh, this isn't normal. Um, and there, there might be a reason for it and we might be able to do something to make it better. For my daughter and I, we've both had an opportunity to be treated by different HTCs in the past before being treated at OHSU. And for both of us, there was a huge difference in our quality of care. The first being that we were actually listened to as patients and OHSU really understood the power of the patient's story and taking the time to understand what the issues were and making sure to treat the issues sometimes regardless of what diagnostic tests may or may not say. It's super important to have a combined clinic for adults because a lot of times input is needed from both hematology and gynecology to come to an appropriate diagnosis and to come up with the best course of treatment. So in our combined clinic, we're able to work together to make sure that we get the right diagnosis and then to discuss the pros and cons of each treatment option. I did fellowship training here um, in complex family planning, which means that I saw people that had abnormal uterine bleeding that needed treatment and learned how different hormonal and non-hormonal therapies can help treat those conditions. Um, after fellowship, I stayed on um, and now I'm faculty and I am the um, adult faculty provider for the hematology gynecology clinic. So when we first started our clinic, we were one of maybe five in the country. And since then, there's over 35 across the country. And again, thinking about how do they use the resources at their hospital or university to get patients the care they need um, and making use of, of the expertise they have at their own institution. Hematologists need to become involved in pregnancy in a couple of situations. The first is when a patient has a bleeding disorder and is at increased risk for bleeding at the time of delivery or after, or if her fetus is at risk of a bleeding disorder and that needs to be taken into consideration. The other is in women who've had a history of blood clots or who are at risk for blood clots and therefore need blood thinners or anticoagulation during and after pregnancy. I think we can be really proud of the fact that we have continued to be available for patients despite the shutdown with COVID and all of the changes in which we've made to, to change how we deliver care. So prior to COVID, everybody was seen in person. We've now switched to an all virtual template, which means that we can see patients from all over the place. 
um, and it's actually expanded um, our catchment area and availability to patients without having to travel far distances to be able to see us. My hope for the future for the women and girls with bleeding disorders that we're treating is to first shorten the time from diagnosis to intervention. Right now, some studies say that there's up to 16 years before somebody gets a treatment, and we can certainly do better and decrease the amount of um, poor experiences that people are having. And then my other um, hope for the future is that we just normalize talking about periods so that people can present to their physician, their, their healthcare provider, and get their symptoms addressed, whether they end up having a bleeding disorder or not. Um, this, this has to be normal to talk about and it will help women improve their experiences overall.